Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode 631 of the show. And this is the third edition of Big Beefy E's Boston Sports Beat, where I talk about all the Boston sports teams, of what's happening to them and all that, and current news and all that. Um, and um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk a lot of Red Sox on this, uh, this episode because they're the only team playing right now. Uh, as you know, the uh, Patriots are having, you know, all the other three teams are having their off season. The Patriots, rumor has it that DeAndre Hopkins will try to visit the New England Patriots facility today. They're going to take a look at him and see whether or not they want to sign him and and everything else. So uh, we'll see what happens. I know he's a free agent wide receiver right now. And a lot of rumors, you know, there's a lot of rumors about DeAndre Hopkins um, wanting to go to New England, always interested in going to New England. We don't know if that's the case. We'll find out, and uh, I don't know what he will be the asking price for him, but one thing's for sure, I'm sure if he's interested in New England, they probably won't, they probably want to give him, give him a test drive there, so, uh, um, <clears throat> so, anyways, um, so we're hoping that's the case, and there's a, and there's a question of whether or not if Patrice Bergeron, should he retire, the Re will the Bruins want to trade Brad Marchand? I don't know you should do that. I think Brad, Mar Brad Marchand is a franchise player for the Bruins. I say keep him. He'll have to step up and pick up where Patrice Bergeron um, left off. He may have to change a few things about him, but one thing is for sure. I think Brad Marchand should stay with the Bruins. Don't trade him. If uh, should, you know. So, um... And um, uh, I gotta tell you, um, last night again, and the Red Sox. We'll talk about uh, Red Sox and the uh, the Guardians. Uh, the Red Sox won the first game of that series, and then the Guardians took the final two. Even the, and, and I'm I'm Audacity dot com. Uh, things are not going well for the Red Sox, turning the bad way. And to begin with, um, the Red Sox decided to choose. Uh, pitch a starter, Matt Dermarty, who came with a con on controversy came to, thanks to a series of tweaks that happened a couple of years ago. Um, with the likely attention that he would be designated for assignment after the game, which he was. So so there's that. And then you know, a few hours later, um, Alex Cora, and a few hours later, found out that Alex Cora benched Alex for do, do go for lack of hustle on a forced play at second base the night before. Well, I think uh, I think Alex Cora has forgotten what Chase Utley did, and if you're trying to break up a double play ball or something like that, and I, and I think that unfortunately, I think I, in my personal opinion, for Do Doogie was trying to be very very careful and not hit you know, not hit the runner or anything like that because I think he kind of remembers the Chase Utley play that took out one of the Met Mets shortstops and so. So, but Cora said this to reporters. Obviously, where we're at. I'm not using him as an example because we have to be better in a lot of aspects. But yesterday, I felt like, you know what? That's not acceptable. And he knows it. I took him out of the game. Then he, today, he's not starting. As awkward as all that was, the dark clouds hovering over this team but got darker when the Red Sox boarded their plane for New York following a 10-3 loss to the Guardians. Not only the Sox have been walloped by Cleveland, dropping Cora's club to one game under 500 and five games out of wild card spot, but everything you know about this team was devolving felt, devolving, felt off. It seems like a lifetime ago the Red Sox were sitting seven games over 500, 21-14, after winning eight straight. Since then, a period that now stretches more than a month, they are one of the worst teams in baseball, going 10-18, and while completely uh, continue, con playing a continually sloppy brand of baseball. My reading of this is getting sloppy. I, along with the appearance by Demardi, the game itself would be remembered 
for the awkward return to progressive field mound by what had been the Red Sox uh, opening day star Corey Kluber. Starter Corey Kluber. Downward spiral for Kluber only gained momentum as one point many, in, many, manifesting himself uh, manifesting itself in eight straight hits by the Guardians. Kluber would love to save the bullpen heading into three games at Yankee Stadium finishing his three on a third inning outing by 11 run, seven runs, one hits. It's very tough. No, not, not only him, but with anybody we have out there. We're talking about it. They hit the ball hard. They hit it off the end, check swings. It looks like he couldn't buy a break, but he gave us enough. We were able to kind of reset our bullpen. Let's be ready for tomorrow, which is today. Making matters worse, the one, negoti- one negotiable piece of equation is that when it comes to playing baseball in Boston, accountability was uncomfortably thin thanks to the post-game unavailability of both uh, Verdugo and Kluber. But the good news is for the Red Sox that the Yankees represent an opportunity to change the narrative with New York looking dramatically less daunting without the injured Aaron Judge. But even that landscape feels a bit daunting for the Sox, considering their task. We try to turn around their offensive woes against Garrett Cole with a 2.82 ERA on Friday, that's today, and Domingo Herman, uh, 369 ERA on Saturday. It's been tough, Tristan Katz has told reporters after providing one of the few highlights via the seventh inning home run. We're trying to preach a winning culture. We try to stay positive all the time. When things aren't going our way, it's definitely challenging. We keep a light group here, though. We always stay positive. As we sit here more than ever this season, that's easier said than done. And Alex and Al Corbett says, well, hopefully we can pick it up and start playing well. Against the Yankees, now, this is, um, um, I, I gotta tell you, the Red Sox have been, you know, they had a very, very tough time, you know, a 10-18 stretch. Um, What's what's going to happen to them against the Yankees tonight? I know the Red Sox can get to Garrett Cole in the past. Can they do it again, though? Well, Alex Verdugo learn how to hustle a little bit more. And, you know, like I said, it's, you know, it has been very tough. But, you know, hopefully that would change a little bit of things. If you think about it, usually the Red Sox will do well in the first half and they falter in the second half. Maybe it's a reversal of fortune. I don't know. Because everybody complains about how all our New England teams will do well in the first part and in the second part to get hurt. The reason why injuries, all right, when you in the second half, when injuries will start to catch up, it will affect your players. It'll affect the players, knock them out, and then we'll replace them with players that don't have that experience as the other players do. And it's going to be tough for them to get it together with, with the other teammates to try to win win ball games. And that's been the uh, main thing. So what the way I see it is that the Red Sox need to get going against the Yankees. Hopefully that will turn out. The, the rivalry is back. And uh, but like I said, a lot of controversy, um, off the field controversy, and all that. They got to cut the clowning on that. They got it. They you know they got to keep it together and focus on playing baseball. You know, you know, and that's the thing. You know, you want you know, stop tweeting stuff and everything else. Just worry about playing the game and uh, playing the game baseball. Play your game. Play your play it real well. Don't focus on what's going on in the social world. You know, or in the political world, or anything like that. The Red Sox need to stay focused. They need, especially against a team like the Yankees, man. Um, I'll tell you what, the Yankees are in fourth place right now because I know Baltimore, Toronto. Because the, the American League East is one of the toughest divisions now because most of the teams are playing above five hundred, with exception of the Red Sox, thirty and thirty-one below five hundred. So you get, so it's going to be a very competitive division. The Red Sox, if they want to compete, they want to do is they got to stop worrying about everything else, play the game, play hard, and try to win, get base hits. You know, it's, and you know, and, and Alex Cora needs to get that through through to them, and then, I, and I, I think I think demoralizing to you without Chris Sale. That's another thing. You know, I think Chris Sale is like a spark plug for that team. Whether you know whether he's pitching or what he's not pitching, be on the bench motivating people, and you know, and I think they're missing that, and that could be another reason why too. And so I personally believe that the Red Sox, in order for them to get going, they need. To basically um, just worry about playing the game and play play it while trying to take it one game at a time. We'll see what happens, you know. So focus, Boston. Come on, Red, come on, Red Sox. We got to get going with this. And you got the Yankees coming up. The rivalry. It's back. Even though Aaron Judge will um, is hurt, you got you know Red Sox need to bear down and, and you know bear down, buck up, and cowboy up and do something, man, because. 
This is you know like Alex Cora said, it's unacceptable. Can't can't play like that, man. We got to start winning, start focusing, start winning, and we'll do well. And that's what I'm hoping. So, hopefully the Red Sox can you know like I said, two out of three, uh, losing two out of three against Cleveland, not good at all. Hopefully it can turn they can turn it around against the Yankees, and uh, it's going to be a tough. Gonna be a tough series, that's for sure. It's gonna be a very tough series for the Red Sox to see how they do, but it's gonna be at the Bronx, and uh, it looks like everything is okay because I think the the air quality could be a little bit better up there. So I'm hoping that's, you know, so I'm hoping that's the case, and I'm um, hoping that uh, New York is ready to go, and um, we'll we'll have a series. Let's see what happens. This is the first time they're playing against each other this season, so a little bit of excited about the rivalry. And uh, has it changed? I think so. Even though the Red Sox did break the curse back in 2004, knocking off the Yankees um, from a 3-0 deficit to beat them in four straight in the ALCS and then win four straight in the World Series. And so I personally believe that it's changed a little bit. But, uh, but it's going to be, it's like, it's like a, a restart of, some, uh, of, the, of the rivalry or something uh, at one point, you know. And because... It, it's like you know the twenty um, two thousand four. For me, when they won the world, when the Red Sox won the World Series, to me, it's a restart. You know, it's like the beginning, like zero zero type deal. And all, but the Red Sox were up one nothing in in this iteration, twenty first century iteration of the Red Sox Yankee rivalry, and because they won four World Series ranks, um, Yankees won one in in the in. The, I'm talking twenty first twenty first century iteration, not twentieth century. Yankees won more. Got it. But but history total, Yankees got got it, but what I'm trying to focus on is the here and now. That's what we want to I want to focus on. So so we'll see what happens, you know what I mean? Um we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens on the uh you know, tonight's series against the Yankees. I know there's a lot there's a lot going on. A lot of baseball going on, a lot of stuff going on in all sports, you know, wrestling, going, you know, just found out that Oscar may be presented with a new championship belt. Hmm, interesting. And uh, we'll see how that develops. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So that's it. That's all the time we have on the show. Episode six hundred and thirty-one of Eric Lehman Shenanigans, nineteen seventy-seven. Big BPEs, Boston Sports Beat three. So I'm really excited about this. See, we'll see what happens. All right. So until the next episode comes rolling around, Mister Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now. <laughs>